Welcome back to that folks. It's been a while, but I've been busy. So what I want to do today is I want to build this kit. This is one of those little cheap little uh, $10 tube amplifiers you get off of AliExpress and other places. Uh, one thing I want to mention though, and this is something I did uh, off camera, just going through the kit to make sure all the parts were there, is um, these tubes can sometimes, I was lucky, but these tubes can sometimes uh, come with the pins bent and damaged. And so what I did is I, I put them in these sockets, and it's just for two reasons there. First is to protect the pins. So if I do something silly with it, it is going to be far more sturdy here. It's not going to affect the actual tubes themselves. If the pins bend in the tubes, you have a serious risk of uh, damaging the glass and letting air in the tube will not work. Uh, the other reason is these pins on these sockets are awfully floppy. So if you go and solder them in without first having them mounted on the tube, you may not be able to get the tube in and you might have to bend the pins in order to do that. So it's a good idea before you um, even begin to assemble it is uh, just put the sockets on the tubes. I managed to um, run down the schematic and there's something I really don't like about it. But let's go over it here a little bit. So we've got the, the power comes in here as a half wave rectifier 2.2 ohm resistor and it goes in series with the heaters of the tubes and that's one of the problems I saw with it that's a big problem and I'll get to that in a second and it comes out here and it goes to these two voltage doublers here it's not a bridge rectifier it's a voltage doubler so we've got positive voltage doubler negative voltage doubler and uh, these transistor pairs are arranged as a constant current source so I think it's uh, limited to about 10 milliamps or so and that gives us uh, nominally minus 28 volts and plus 28 volts, which will go across the tube. And then, of course, the, the input comes in here through a volume control knob. Now, this is doubled, so this occurs twice, this little circuit here, as the biasing for the tube, and you've got your audio out. Now, what do I not like about this? Well, what's going to happen here is that the, you're going to have a terrific load on the transformer for one half the waveform. And then the other half of the waveform, you're going to have your 20 milliamps or so to, to run the tube. That transformer is not going to like that. And I'm not going to like that either. Plus the waveform, you know, of a half wave rectification is going to create a lot of switching noise down at the bottom here in this diode. And that can't be great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave out that diode. I'll leave the resistor in and I'll leave out that capacitor. And of course, then uh, these LEDs here a uh, standard risk of getting too much reverse voltage and blowing themselves off. So I'll just leave them and these resistors out as well. And we'll see how that works. Now I did check the components and everything does seem to be here. So well, these are all the parts. And uh, there, here's the circuit board. It's rather compact and uh, densely populated for a uh, through-hole board. But it should be a pretty easy build. I mean, there are not all that many parts here. And, uh, well, Let's just get started on building it. I've got my irons over here. I'm going to get started. Now, if I come across anything along the way, I will indeed stop and mention it. But I'll just zoom through all this and uh, play a little bit of music in the background.
now I have to arrange for a power supply. Now it requires 12 volts AC. So I have to go get a 12 volt transformer and put a DC barrel plug on it and we'll hook it up and we'll try it out. All right, we're all set up here. Let me tell you what I got set up. I got uh, approximately 12 volts AC coming in. I've got a function generator here with uh, 100 millivolt, one kilohertz sine wave coming out of channel one. Okay, should be able to see that blue trace up here. And you can see that we are coming in at one kilohertz and we are at 104 millivolts. Close enough. We're gonna try this one channel first and then the other channel next. I'm going to look at frequency response and I'm going to look at dynamic range. And we'll, of course, we'll look at the gain here. All right, let's turn it on and let those uh, heaters heat up. And there we go. So, okay. Let's turn the volume up all the way here. So it looks like we're putting in 100 millivolts and getting out almost 800. So we've got a gain of about seven and a half here. I think that's probably fine. Let's do the sweep. So let's go down to uh, something like 10 hertz. Okay, it's down to about 5.7. Let me uh, increase the amplitude and add a little distorted. So let's bring it up to 20 hertz. It is, uh, as, as far as the bandwidth is concerned, it's, it's fine down at 10 hertz, but it's distorted as heck. So at 20 hertz, okay, well, that's much nicer. Okay, let's see about 30 hertz. And looking fine there. So let's uh, let's bring it up to the high end here. So bring up to 10 kilohertz. Now it looks like we do have a little bit of a 60 hertz hum in there. Let me turn the the amplitude all the way down. Yeah, see it's still there. And if we turn it off, it goes away. So it is coming in from the amplifier, and we get a good better idea of the amount we have there. So yeah, it looks like it's like by 22, 23 millivolts peak to peak. Eee. Okay, well it is what it is. For 10 bucks, what do you expect? All right, let's bring this up again. Uh, let's go out and have a look at it here. So that's at 10 kilohertz there. Let's uh, bring it up, 20 kilohertz. We're looking for it to stay above about half a volt there, 500 millivolts, so. Uh, we're up here now at 60 kilohertz. Definitely goes beyond the audio range here. And here we are, about 90 kilohertz. Let's see what it does at 100 kilohertz. It's still fine. So yeah, it goes up to, let's say 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz. That's good. Now let's bring it back down to one kilohertz again. See where it's gonna start clipping. So let's bring this way down here. Now, if it gets above about three volts, peak to peak, uh, that's that's perfect. And let's start bringing up the amplitude here. So 100 millivolts going in, 300 millivolts going in. And we're already up to about 2.3 volts on the output. 400 millivolts going in, 500 millivolts going in. Let's see if we put a whole volt in going into it. Yeah, we're not clipping yet. Continue one up here, see where she starts clipping. Oh, two volts going in, three volts going in. Okay, we're beginning to distort badly there. Three volts going in and 18 volts coming out. I'd say that's pretty good for 10 bucks. All right, let's, uh, let's try the other channel now. Let's get it back to uh, 100 millivolts and one kilohertz. All right, hope don't touch anything with 60 volts on it here. Okay. Yeah, very same performance here. We're getting up around about 780 millivolts out for 102 millivolts in. That seems pretty reasonable. Okay, let's do the frequency sweep. We'll bring it down to 10 hertz again. Yeah, we're seeing the same kind of distortion here. So back up to 20 hertz. Yeah, pretty well gone at 20 hertz. Really nice at 30 hertz. Okay, let's go up and start up here at 20 kilohertz and go up from there. So the output's okay, she's beginning to start to roll off. And the other one made up to 100 kilohertz, right? So let's get up there quickly. Yeah, there we are at 100 kilohertz. And it, it's looking pretty good. 
let's see the clipping situation on this one. We'll bring it back down to one kilohertz. We've got a volt going in, 7.8 volts coming out. Two volts going in, 14 volts coming out. And yeah, there we go. We're This one looks like it's starting to distort a little bit earlier. Just a tad though. I think it's working pretty good for a $10 tube amplifier. All right, folks, let me tell you about the kit build. It was pretty easy. You know, it's, it, there's very few different component values, although there's quite a few components. Easy to figure out where they go, because, you know, if there's a 47K here, there's a 47K over here. It's kind of like a line of symmetry here. And if there's something on one side, there's something on the other side of the same value. So it's, it's once you find the one, you can find the rest of them. And it goes pretty quickly. And like I say, there's, there's very few different values. So it makes it easier that way too. Like there's only two sizes of capacitor, 470 UF and one UF. That's it. So it's a really easy build. The, the board solders very well. Okay, the couple of things I would say is that the, the holes for the sockets are rather loose. So if I hadn't soldered the tubes in with the sockets, it could have been very bad. So I would do that as soon as you get the kit. So if the two pins are nice and straight, put your sockets on, that way you'd be able to solder them in nicely. And another thing I would like to have seen, I and mean, it wasn't too much bother for me, but the transistor legs are all fairly close together. So I know that would give some beginners a hard time. And I would say this is a beginner's kit all in all. But other than that, it's, it's great. All the parts were there. And you can see from what we've done here, it, the performance is pretty good. So if you're going to use it as the preamp stage of a guitar amplifier, you get that nice tube sound. I think this would do very well for that. This was neat. Last time I worked with tubes, I was in my 20s. So this is taking me back away. Anyway, folks, that's all I had for you today. I hope uh, you had some fun watching this, uh, seeing how good it can be. We'll see you in the next video, folks. Bye-bye.